Well, one issue we have been covering extensively on the platform has been the rather curious circumstances in which a, well, self-styled right-wing journalist, or he's a right-wing journalist, Avi Yemeni from Australia, was denied entry to New Zealand on the grounds of character. A uh, totally, if you like, uh, subjective judgment made by immigration officials, we were told. But it has since emerged that uh, New Zealand police had simply deemed Mr Yemeni following a less than flattering article in the Herald without a byline, had deemed him as someone they did not want in New Zealand. And as a result, they went searching for reasons not to let him into this country, to, to demand that he needed a visa and then say he didn't meet the character requirements for a visa. Every time I ask at the Beehive about this, the Prime Minister, let's be frank, looks a little pissed off with me. Um, but is it right that we have rules not, evil, not evenly applied to people and to be frank that look at it as if we have agencies of state making value judgments on the political positions of individuals here or overseas. Uh, joining us to discuss this uh, is the leader of the New Zealand First Party, uh, Winston Peters. Mr Peters, welcome uh, to the programme. I know the mainstream media aren't interested in this story, but it would seem to me a very fundamental principle at stake here. Well, they should be interested in the story because it began with them. David Fisher is in the mainstream media, as you know, and they're not asking the right questions or they're failing to persist with questions that should be asked. There's no way, as the Prime Minister said, that she learned from this in the public domain. Second, she said that this doesn't come up to a ministerial level. Now, with the greatest respect, that can't be true. Whatever happened to no surprises? And if it is true, then why aren't we asking the Minister of Immigration? Why aren't we asking her then Minister for Police, and why are we asking the State Services Commissioner, what's going on here, you guys? Mm. Uh, because in the end, they have, they have to know, and they have to have told the Prime Minister, when not when there's a breach of the regulations and rules, but when they themselves have wantonly breached the rules to stop someone coming in. Yeah. Our investigations and our questions to immigration followed a flow something like this. We had the Prime Minister saying it was totally immigration's decision and, and discretion. Immigration started to answer our questions formally and in writing, and then suddenly they looked at it and said, no, 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 we did this on the advice of the New Zealand uh, police, which seemed to go counter to the Prime Minister saying, this is all a decision uh, for immigration. We then have a memo, a leaked memo, which turns out to be true, in which the police simply say, we do not want these people in New Zealand. We have nothing on them. Could you find something on them? Does that worry you? Well, it doesn't just worry me. It is a massive concern that we've got to a state in our country, which should be one of the great democracies with an understanding of freedom, where the application of the rules now depends upon who you are. This is a political decision that was made. And if the person's background was of a character to rule him out, then I would say, why is Mr. Mallard being allowed to go to Ireland as one of our uh, high commissioners? Because it's that, uh, uh, ambassadors. Because it's the same rule, isn't it? These sorts of uh, anomalies and indiscretions on the part of the government can't go on, but it's a mess. Mm -hmm. And it's not being something confessed or owned up to because the nature of parliamentary questions put by the media is to ensure that the system is honest and, and is accountable. And if you can be deceptive and get away with all sorts of uh, uh, roadblocks and deviations in your answer, then there's no accountability and the whole thing's a waste of time. Yeah. Does this mean necessarily, Mr Peters, that you think uh, Mr Avi Yemeni is the finest person, human being who ever walked the planet? <laughs> uh, most definitely doesn't mean that. That's not the point. The reality is he's being uh, maligned and defamed on the basis of judgment now, I'll tell you, I think that David Fisher is, on the whole, a very good journalist. But what happened here was the story starts off and then goes into a whole lot of what you might call unproven allegations. Why was Interpol involved? Why hasn't the police minister or the head of the police explained what went on here? Because if they can do that to somebody who is, after all, from Australia, our nearest neighbour and friend, then they can do it to you as well. And that's where... 
the uh, rub sets in this country. Mm. Yet it seems to me strange we look at this guy, what's his name, Carl Shrubrick, a guy who imports drugs into this country and we don't deport him. I read a case in the papers last week, a 51-year-old Fijian man who was convicted of domestic violence against his wife and pulled a knife on her and held it to her throat and we're not deporting him back to Fiji. It certainly seems there is no consistency on these issues. Well, it's worse than that, uh, but you're talking about a uh, current situation where the idea that uh, being soft on law and order somehow works, it doesn't work. It just encourages others to repeat the kind of offences that the society has outlawed. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest, uh, Winston Peters, as a journalist, I can only ask so many questions before you hit uh, the brick wall. And it would seem to be the government is, is sh shutting up shop on this issue. Got any ideas on where we go next on it? I'm sorry, Mr Plunkett. What's going on here is something far more malignant than that. We used to have a thing called the Fourth Estate, keeping the political system, whether local or central government, with all its flaws, accountable. It no longer happens. The mainstream media, as you know, has been corrupted. They've been bought off. They're not asking the real questions any longer. This is actually a serious road to what I might call perdition when it comes to a democracy and freedom. The fourth estate's not doing its job. Uh, and day after day, I hear them start something or uh, not fail to ask the most honest and, and automatic questions. Prime Minister, if you're right, then what happened to the no surprises rule mm. that you keep on talking about? Prime Minister, why is the Minister of Immigration, the Minister of Peace, and the State Service Commission have been called in to ask what went wrong here. But you're getting no answers at all. Now, mm. it's not so serious. It's just a, a tragedy for someone's freedom who is a journalist. And after all, you don't really want to muck around with the journalist and political uh, and media freedom. Mm. But that's been happening ever since they walked in and gave them $55 million and bought their soul. I'm sorry to say that because in the end, whether you like journalists or not, a free media, and accountable media is critical to a free society. Mm. On that, Mr Peters, you will not be uh, unaware, um, as I know you keep an eye on such things, of a trend currently in our media to go around, and I've used the term witch-hunting local body candidates or indeed school board candidates who might hold views or be associated with organisations loosely um, described as anti-vax or anti-mandate or vaccine sceptical. It would seem in particular the Stuff organisation is literally daily publishing lists of people that it considers to be inappropriate candidates in, in local bodies. That seems to me a new and rather worrying development as well. Well, that is be it central or local government level, are entitled to know what the product is that they're buying on the market when they vote. So I don't object to them asking candidates what is your position on this, that or something else. What I do object to is they're focusing on the far, on the right or the far right and doing nothing about the pinko communist left. That's oh. where it's unbalanced. All right, so you're saying it's a one-way street from what you can see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying it. You show me where they've done it on the left. Yeah, um, much, much more difficult to find. Mr Peters, I thank you for your observations uh, on this and for uh, joining us this morning. We will talk again soon. That is the uh, leader of the New Zealand First Party, uh, Winston Peters. And I've got to say, I've been wondering as a lone voice on this story whether or not I just had it wrong and I was missing something and I should just go and buy a lotto ticket. It is nice to get someone else with some political um, experience who also is deeply concerned, deeply concerned, about the RV Yemeni uh, story and what has transpired there.